Hello, everyone. Um, yes, my name's Luke Bond. Um, I'm doing my talks titled Rocket for Plat Platform Builders. Um, what I kind of mean by that is um, it'll be mostly a sort of Rocket 101 introduction with some, some examples, some demos showing you how to use Rocket. But uh, there'll be also me talking a bit about why I think it's particularly good for building platforms with it. But mostly it's a, it's a Rocket 101 talk, I guess. Um, it'll also start with a bit of history about uh, um, sort of how Rocket came to be. I mean, I don't, I don't work for CoreOS, right? So just a disclaimer at the beginning, this is all just my opinion and what I've read from blog posts and stuff like that, right? So um, I'm not telling you CoreOS's version of events as such, but um, some of the history about why, why I think Docker was, uh, why I think Rocket was built and what was going on with Docker at the time. And uh, then, as I said, some sort of opinions and stuff around why I think, what I think Rocket's good for. Um, Settle so down the first slide. Okay, so uh, who am I? Um, I work for a consultancy in London. I mostly do Node and Docker and stuff like that, um, and sort of a yeah, back-end developer. And um, I built a thing once upon a time, I haven't touched it in a while, called Paz, which is where a lot of where my opinion, where my sort of experience of this comes from. So I tried to build like a fairly basic platform as a service on CoreOS and Fleet. Um, and I ran into some problems, and, and that will kind of make sense later. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, you may remember when Rocket was first announced, there was a blog post uh, by Alex Polvey, I think it was December 2014, about uh, how felt that. Uh, is this readable, by the way? I, um, I can make it slightly bigger if need be. It's okay, yeah? Um, about how uh, in Chorus felt that Docker was not becoming the simple composable building block they hoped it would be. Um, as uh, people familiar with CoreOS, uh, the way they build tools, it's often they, they build one thing that does, that does something well, it's kind of Unix philosophy type thing, and um, they like using, using building blocks to put things together to make platforms, and um, Docker, as it became more of a big platform, was no longer like that, so I think that was one of the large motivating factors. And uh, it was announced alongside the AppC set of specifications for various things, including um, uh, the runtime itself for, for running containers, and also um, the image format and discovery distribution, that kind of thing. Um, if you go to GitHub App C, you can see these specs there. And the focus was largely on composability, sec security, image distribution, and openness. Um, and as will be a bit of a recurring theme for, for this talk, um, the way Docker has the daemon, um, as I'm sure you all know, when you run Docker on the command line, you're running a client that speaks to an API, uh, speaks via an API to the, to the Docker daemon, and, um, which makes composability a problem. You can't sort of pipe things in and out of that thing. It's not, it's not really Docker itself, it's an API. Um, so you may recall when first, uh, when things like Weave and uh, Flocker and these kind of tools um, came around, they were sort of wrapping the Docker CLI, which is obviously not ideal. I think that's a bit different nowadays, of course. There are, there are plugins, but still it's, um, that kind of model has its, has its side effects, I suppose. Um, then if we sort of fast forward to, I think, uh, what I've got up there, June 2015, the Open Container Initiative, or at least initially called Open Container Project, was announced. And uh, we'll hear more about this later, I think. There's a talk by Vincent about that, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. But um, the, and that was started with the container image format and runtime donated by Docker. So um, it was an app C that was the sort of founding format. It was, it was, those, it was Docker's V2 uh, image format. So it, the, the reason I'm mentioning all this, by the way, is because I found maybe once upon a time that maybe it's like a few months ago, I didn't kind of understand all these ch uh, chain of events, what exactly happened, what AppC was as, uh, in relation to Open Container Foundation. It all gets a bit confusing unless you follow it quite closely. So I did, um, I did a talk at Docker London, which may be a strange place to do it, um, a few months ago where I really sort of put that into a lot of detail. And I'm just going to skim over it here because it's kind of dry. But um, that sort of sequence of events in relation to standards and uh, what happened between you know, what people call the container wars, right? But, um, that's, uh, so you, can, you can look up more about that there if you want to know more. Um, but as I see it, um, AppC, with their announcement of Rocket, sort of shook things up enough, I think, um, with, uh, so that Docker would started 
I don't, I, this sounds like I'm bashing Docker, actually, not like that. <laughs> um, so some, op some open standard commitments came out of Docker as a result, I think, of AppC shaking things up enough. Um, I, I, maybe you could say that they didn't really have to before because it was just so popular. Um, so I think that's a great thing. And uh, now those standards, um, standard organizations like Open Container Initiative are really starting to push those sort of standards forward. And that's, uh, that's going to be great for all of us, I think. Um, but initially, it sort of progressed slowly, I think it's fair to say. Um, and it was focused solely on the runtime side of, of the, of, uh, you know, like Run C, the, the bit that just launches containers. But now there's um, some change, that's changing a little. The, um, it's starting to also focus on image uh, format and distribution. And if I understand some GitHub issues reading correctly, I think it might also include the DNS delegat delegatable namespace stuff that is in AppSea. So hopefully that, that happens, that's cool. But don't quote me on that. Okay, so um, back to the daemon architecture. Um, Docker has a daemon, um, as I said before, whereas Rocket doesn't. Um, I'm unsure how common knowledge all this stuff is. I imagine it's fairly simple. But um, when you run a container with Rocket, it's kind of almost like forking your process. If you look at the tree of processes in HTOP or something like that, the container that you launch would sort of be a child of your current shell, basically. Um, whereas, if, whereas in Docker, you're asking the Docker via the API, you're asking the Docker daemon to launch the container for you. So that container will exist under as a child process of the Docker daemon, basically. So you don't have control of your processes so directly as, uh, as you might think, because the, the CLI gives you the impression that you do. Um, and it's this difference that I think makes, uh, makes Rocket particularly good for building platforms. Um, and the way the Docker daemon model works is really, it's really good. It makes a great user experience for Docker, gives them a great integrated solution, and they can, they can build on that. And uh, it's one, you know, the, the user experience of Docker is one of the things that has made it so popular. But um, I think that what, what we'll see down the line, in, and arguably already seeing, is that by sort of buying in wholesale to the, the, Doc, the Docker stack with Swarm and Compose and all these kind of things, you'll kind of end up, um, well, it's kind of like a lock-in thing, I suppose. Um, and this is, I think, is a limiting factor for people who are building platforms. By, by that, I mean if you're building some sort of platform as a service or anything like that, a container-based one on top of Docker, then I think you'll run into certain problems. Um, at least I, I, I did anyway. Um, also, um, so this kind of conundrum you come up against, right? So if you are building such a platform and you go all in on Compose and Swarm, and maybe you build a nice web UI and a CLI or I don't know, something like this, then I think that, um, so you, we measure something like Deus, right? The really nice user, um, like developer workflow on top of, um, on top of Docker. Um, it's on top of Kubernetes, but let's imagine. Um, then uh, you'll, have a, you'll have a kind of, you'll have no differentiating technology really, except for maybe a nice UI. Um, see you like because all the interesting plumbing parts, all the hard bits are kind of solved by those core technologies that come with Docker, like Swarm and Compose. Whereas if you don't build on those and you just use the Docker daemon, um, and maybe you do your own multi-host networking, um, all the kind of other plumbing stuff you'll need to do around it to make something like that work, then you still have this problem of not really being in control of your processes. Um, and you know, for me, that just kind of feels, this doesn't, just doesn't feel right. Um, kind of a slightly unrelated, but tangentially related um, point. Also, there's this, uh, I think we're seeing something at the moment about, I think it's, people call it the race to PID1 or something like this, right? So system D, some people say owns too much and, and what have you. But at the end of the day, um, uh, I, I, think, I think we're seeing Docker trying to capture more and more and um, basically want to own the whole, the whole thing, right? Which makes sense for them, I think. It's not a criticism. But... Um, we're seeing, we're seeing changes in, have, in, in this type of thing within the industry, I think. And they've also purchased the Unikernel solutions. So then when you run, if you, when you run like Unikernel stuff with Docker down the line, you're basically running a whole OS, right? So this whole thing, um, uh, how do I explain this? Ah, so you may recall have seen some talks about, um, by Red Hat where they're trying to, they have some challenges integrating Docker and systemd because Docker kind of wants to own everything and systemd kind of wants to own anything. This is a good example of where this is playing out. And um, I think 
yeah, hopefully that makes sense. So this is just a sort of side story that I think is kind of relevant and part of what I think Doc is getting towards. Okay, so um, I mean, Alex Polvi himself said um, in a blog post uh, or in an interview actually um, about this Rocket for Platform Builders thing. Um, he sees that there really are two buckets of users for Rocket and they could both be considered platform builders. Basically one is people who are building an infrastructure type thing like AWS and, and the, or some sort of container based platform um, and the other is people who have an enterprise platform already and they just want to add containers to it. Um, Rocket's really good for that because if you use Docker I think then you'll run into some of these problems I've been discussing already. Um, so I, I tend to be running ahead of myself and saying more things in my future slides in earlier ones. Basically saying the same thing already that um, Docker is kind of a, a, a full integrated solution. You might want something off the shelf that does everything for you and it's great for that um, but precludes using it as a building block. Um, so yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think as I'm sure many of us do, this tool should generally follow the Unix philosophy um, and Docker does too much. It's downloading images, putting them on your disk which is you know, fine but doesn't really need to be root to be doing all this stuff. Um, whereas Rocket is something small and composable that you can build in with other tools. Um, it uses things like TarGZ and, and um, DNS and kind of just basically things that already existed that work quite well that you didn't really need to redo. Um, so that's what I like about it basically. And for example, managing processes, you already have something that does um, a, a very good job of that and that's your Linux init, init system that will start and stop your containers, watch for them to crash. We don't really need something else to do that. Um, so, just philosophical points, I suppose. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into more practical section. Um, we'll see how this works with my projector setup here. Um, so, Rocket is uh, unlike Docker again. Uh, Rocket's just a container runtime. It's more like more analogous to Run C, I suppose. Uh, but so it doesn't build as well. So, if you want to build to build containers, to build images to run with rockets, then you use AC build, which is the AppC build tool. Um, it works, it doesn't work like, Docker, like a Docker file where you have uh, a text file that you describe and that it, it sort of compiles it. It's basically, you call a sequence of commands, almost like uh, if you're making, it's kind of like maybe if you were making a Docker image without using a Docker file, you sort of build it up sequentially, sequentially and kind of commit it in a way. Um, so I have some examples of that. Um, right, so if we take this simple, now let's see if I can jump to another, can you see that? Obviously not. Um, so if we, um, I'm a little hamstrung for typing at the moment, so I'm relying on my command history. Um, so simple, uh, simple C app, right? Um, we compile it, we run it, it does what you expect. Um, and I have a, uh, an, an AC build like script. So you can see that it works in a way that you'd expect, I suppose, if you're used to Docker. Um, same kind of concepts. You, you are, you're, creating, you're creating the image, you're giving it a name, setting some metadata basically. You're adding your stuff to it. Um, here I'm just adding the binary I just built. And you set a working directory, give it like a command that it's going to run at the end, um, and then it ends up sort of as a file on disk. So if I uh, if I if I run that, uh, uh, I forgot to clean up after myself when I was testing this before. One, one second. Okay, let's do that again. It doesn't print much out, of course, but um, we can see that there's this file here, hello latest Linux AMI, um, and we can run that um, with this command. So sudo rocket run, basically. Um, we need to pass this insecure options image um, just because I didn't sign it out of laziness, right? So that's just how you say it's fine to run this for not signed. Um, there you go, runs. Cool, exciting stuff, yeah? So. Where's my slides? <coughs> okay, so we can do that. And I've been through that, I haven't done that. Okay, so then you can see, um, right, that kind of looks at, uh, 
Yep, so you can see other things I was running earlier. Um, but basically, um, where's the one? Hello, right? That's the one I just ran. Um, and you can also see, you can also see the image just like in Docker, you say Docker images, I think. Uh, you can do the same thing. Docker sudo rocket, uh, rocket image list, and there's the, there's the one I just built. Um, 1.6 meg, that's quite nice. Okay. Um, you have a handy uh, garbage collection command. You know how in Docker when you, you have a bunch of images, you forget to delete them. After all, you need to do some grep awk thing to get rid of them. There's a command like that built in, which is cool. So you can do um, CD rocket um, GC, and it will kill some old stuff. And now this list is slightly smaller. <laughs> Um, and Studio Rocket Image GC also will clean up old images. And now we can see that that list is uh, not much shorter. Because these are all things I ran like an hour ago, so it knows not to delete them if they if only just use them, basically. Um, but it, you know, it's a handy tool without having to do all that orc grab stuff. Sorry, I jumped. Ah! I'm going to close this so I don't. OK, cool. Back to my slides. Um, OK, so let's look at a more complex example, something that has like a, you, can, you can actually curl, right? So um, I have this <coughs> contrived example I always use um, called Demo API, which is um, you can see in the slides, which I'll, I'll, I'll like tweet out after. But um, it's just you, you can download this yourself, right? It's just a simple node app that you just do curl on slash and it prints something out, right? Um, and you can see here how simple it is. It's just going to say hello world from this IP address. And I have a script, uh, an, app, uh, an app C, an AC, AC build script here that you can build it with, which is a really nice one actually. It's come, it just comes from one of the examples, but it's got like traps in there and things. It's really cool. So um, it's the same thing as before. Just put a bunch of comments. Basically, adds the adds the application because it's Node. It, I'm depending off Alpine, much like you might do in in Docker. I add Node.js as a package, then I do an npm install. I'm sure, you can get the idea. So I, if I run that, I built it earlier, so I may get like a conflict. Shouldn't take too long. The Wi-Fi here seems to be pretty good. Although, we'll see how it is when it gets to the npm install bit. Which is slow these days. Cool. So, um, then it's made that demo API latest file. And we can run that. Um, sudo rocket, if I got the right one. Demo API latest. Cool. Cool. That's, uh, I know that's running. So if I just jump to another terminal for a moment, because that's in the foreground, and I do sudo rocket list. Um, sorry, that's not very readable. You lose all the columns. But um, running 11 seconds ago, and it has an IP address, right? So I can just curl that. 172, 16, 28, 16. Cool, there's my hello world um, contrives example. Cool. So, rocket list, yes, it did that. Okay, cool. So, um, how much you access logs for your application? Unfortunately, mine doesn't print out anything in the logs, but um, I'll show you how to do it any, anyhow. I keep doing this. Okay. So, um, you basically use, uh, because Rocket, at least the default implementation of Rocket, that, that I'm using, the one that just comes out of the box, has a stage one that it uses systemd and spawn to launch the containers. So under, underneath is as if you were using systemd, so you kind of can use systemd's tools. So um, basically, journal control is what, is what I use to look at the logs. <coughs> um, so, uh, and you just need to get the machine ID from, for it. So let's do machine control list. There's my thing. Um, journal control. Minus M. Uh, 
Did I, do I really? Okay. So uh, there's nothing interesting in the logs, of course. It's just a hello world app. But that's how you look at logs. And um, stopping containers, likewise, because it's just sort of calling out to system Ds to do this. You basically can just use machine control kill, which I find a bit tedious. Um, I, um, I think I heard on one of the update calls that they do that they're going to they're going to add a kill command, so that would be nice. Um, so, but in the meantime, you uh, you have to do machine control kill, and now sudo so rocket list. Um, it's they're all exited, so that's killed the the machine, the insistent D terms. Um, but yeah, a bit tedious, but simple enough. Um, okay, so signing Im images, I mentioned briefly before. Um, it's really quite easy to do. Um, in case it's not obvious, the reason why you would want to do it is like you would with any kind of package manager or so like you're downloading a Ubuntu package or something like that. You want to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with, basically. Um, so you want to sign it so that the tool at the other end can verify that. And um, so that's why we do it. But it's very simple to do. I'm not going to do it here just because, um, you know, it's time, I suppose. But um, there's, you can just Google, it, Google for us on the, on the Rocket documentation website. There's a, there's a section that shows how to do it. It's just using standard, standard GPG tools. Um, but that's why we pass that insecure options equals images flag to Rocket Run. Um, Rocket can also run uh, Docker images well, indirectly. So there's a tool called Docker to ACI, which is an AppSea tool to pull down Docker images and convert them to ACI format, the standard AppSea format. Um, so um, we can, let's try that. Um, copy pasting here because typing skills. Um, so this is just the same, this is the, like the Docker Hub version of the, oh, did I not install it? Ah, okay, sorry, I didn't install it um, before coming here. But basically what it does is it pulls down the Docker image, flattens all those individual layers, which are basically just little Taji's heads with metadata, flattens them into one, one ACI file, and you get that there on disk, and you can just run it. Um, you, can also pass, uh, you can also pass an option, no squash, and it will uh, leave them in separate files and put the sort of link them together in the same way that Docker would. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's quite handy. So basically, yeah, Rocket can run Docker things. Indirectly, um, you can also run. You can also seem as though you're running them directly by just doing rocket run, and instead of passing it an ACI file, you can pass it Docker colon slash slash, and all the same. You know, you can do key dio whatever quay dio as I discovered it was pronounced this morning, um, <laughs> um, and you can just run it, reinstall anything from a Docker registry. But what that's doing um, under the hood is just using Docker to ACI to convert it into like its local cache, and then it's running the ACI file. So it's not really running it directly. Um, but nevertheless, it does mean that with Rocket, if you're thinking of building a container-type platform on top of Rocket, it's no problem that, you're, that, it's, that it's not Docker, because it can still run Docker things, basically. Um, and the insecure options image there is required because, uh, well, I don't know if that, that one's not signed anyway, but if it were, um, Docker signs things in a different way um, than, um, than, than Rocket does. So, um, so you need to pass that. In fact, I don't know if that would even work if it was a signed one, but I'm sure you can figure that out if you get to that point. Okay, so um, how does the image discovery and distribution work in Rocket? Um, it follows the AppSea spec, and, and it's sort of well described if you want to go and read that in the spec, and um, again, it's at AppSea on GitHub. Um, but basically, whereas Docker uses, um, uses registries with repositories for each, each, each image, for all, with all the layers for each image, um, Ro uh, Rocket just uses kind of standard, like, web technologies, I guess. So um, they, they leverage H the, um, some special meta tags in HTML pages, so you can, um, which, which will give you a templatized URL for where to download it. So um, just to show you that this is, this is like, not made up. Um, if, you, if you were to go to the, the, the key, uh, I'm going to call it Keith. That's, 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 We're that's fine with that. Oh, great! Thank you. Is, do you. is there difference of opinions within the office, or is it uh, is it is it definitely Quay? We all call it Quay, but folks in uh, the Berlin office. You know. Okay, cool, cool. I'll I'll I'll, I'll persevere for now. Um, so uh, 
you can, um, yes, yeah, so if you go to the etcd page on, on, on key, then in the HTML there's these meta tags and that's what they look like. And uh, it's basically a templatized URL for how to, where to go and download the tidyz and also where to get the keys to make sure that it hasn't been tampered with, etc. cetera. Um, Um, which basically means that the, the, the way it stores images is so simple that you can, sorry, the way, the, way, the way the image distribution works is so simple that you can almost store them wherever and however you like, as long as you kind of implement something like this. So you don't need a registry, you don't need whatever, but um, yeah. And you can also install, you can also, um, you can also store rocket images kind of in, uh, in, in key itself, but that will get converted, they'll get stored as Docker, but they'll get converted out. Is that, someone correct me if that's wrong. It's kind of, it's not storing Rocket things directly, but you can use it for, for Rocket. Um, I'm conscious that there are people here who know so much more about Rocket than I do, so shout out if I do say something wrong. Okay, so uh, the term pods is uh, popularized by the Kubernetes project. And um, in, uh, in Rocket, basically, everything that you're running, I've been saying running containers until now, but really what, it, what, what I should be saying is running pods, even though I'm running one process in them, I'm running one container. It's a uh, pod is like first class citizen, whatever you're running, it's treated as a pod. So, um, but what they're used for um, is to group uh, containers together that you would want, that need to be scheduled in one place. Like let's say you wanted to have an API that had a Redis cache, let's say, and you wanted them on the same machine, you might put them in a pod, run them together, um, that, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, so you can do that with Rocket, um, it's quite easy and I'll show an example. Um, so I have this like slight extension of the demo API example from before, um, which uh, which terminal is it in? Cool, it's in here. So demo API Redis, that is basically like this is a hello world HTTP example, but it'll also increment a key in Redis just so that you can um, and increment a counter in Redis just so that you can see that it's that it's that it's working. Uh, and I have an app C file for it. Now this, how this actually works uh, is that you don't describe an AC build file for your whole pod, or I suppose you, you, you might be able to, but um, this is just describing my node app just now, but when you run it, you run that and you run Redis and you kind of hook them up. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how that works. So if I do a, if I build this, uh, um, it shouldn't take a moment. Cool, what was that? Okay, so then we have, um, we have that file there, the demo API Redis. And if I do um, run, not demo API, but the one with Redis in it. I'm going to copy paste it from the slides. It's too long. Sorry. Okay, so this, this long one. So rocket run, I specify a volume for Redis, so I guess I can remember the data. Um, and I'm also running, so this is like running, running this is running Redis. And then this is running my sample app. So if I paste that in here, I'm on a different terminal now, but that doesn't matter. Whoops, sorry, it does matter. Cool, so that's, uh, well, not, it's almost running. Yep, it's running. Um, if I jump over here, I can see uh, to rocket list. Um, what we're interested in here is this top one. You can see that it has one UUID, but then it has two lines. So it has, uh, so that's, based, that's the UUID of the pod, and it has two, two apps, as it says here, Redis and demo API Redis. Um, that's the, a finished one, sorry, but it's the same thing here. Um, so I can test this out. That's, the, that's like the IP address of the pod itself. So if I had like multiple things bound on different ports and different things in there, that would, should be able to hit them on there. 
And you can see there, oh, I ran this earlier, okay, sorry. So four hits, five hits, yeah, cool, it works. I'm so glad this demo is not um, a train wreck so far. It's always a risky thing to do. And, okay, so, and yeah, we see a rocket list there, I'm showing you that already. Cool, so that's, uh, that's pretty much the end. Um, but I hope that it's been useful for like showing you basically what Rocket is cause I, and, and how it works, because I know for me, before I went through this process, I was, I was like, yeah, Rocket, that sounds interesting. Someday it's on my list, I want to learn it, you know, so. But um, it's good to have it sort of wrapped up, partly the history stuff and just how to use it in relation to, to Docker, which is probably most of our reference, most, most, probably the reference point for most of us. Um, I think it's great for building container-based platforms because of this, the fact that it doesn't have the daemon. Um, it, it is like a real building block for, for, for building systems, so I, I, love, I love that about it. And um, if you wanted to use Docker for this kind of thing, not bashing Docker at all, but then I think you'll have troubles for these reasons. Um, that's all. Uh, any, any questions? Yes. Um, so the question is, have I tried using Rocket without Systemd? I haven't at all, no, I've just been, uh, my experience with it is, in, is, is only with Systemd, so I've never tried. But it does have other stage ones, as, as I'm sure you know, there's, um, there's a KVM one, there's, um, there, I uh, don't have them listed off the top of my head, but, but yeah, no, I haven't, sorry. Um, as I understand it, it doesn't require uh, ro Rocket with the, with the implementation I'm using will use, uh, will use Systemd to launch containers, um, but you don't have to use that particular version. You can use one that supports something, something else like KVM or something like that. And I, but maybe you're referring to what happens inside the container. I believe it does use some sort of Systemd or a mini version of it inside the container to run multiple processes. Thank you. Oh, I have some links at the end if you want to read them. Um, this is the source material of all the, the blog posts and stuff that are there, and the, also the, um, the link to the talk where I talk more about the history. And um, yeah, this might be useful. I'll tweet out these slides after the fact. Um, I hope that you're able to read them. Um, any other questions? Thanks.